Hello and welcome back. Series, one of my favorite topics, summing to infinity, this particular uh, pattern. Um, I've done a very similar question um, quite a while back. One, it was one of my first uh, lectures. This is a little bit more involved, so I thought I'll revisit it. Um, if you followed it and um, the first time around, you might be able to find your way around this particular one. Um, we got an obvious pattern. Okay, there's the one, one over 24. And then we got at the bottom 24, 48, 72, 96. The next one would have been, of course, 120. So it keeps multiplying by an extra, uh, I don't know how to describe it really, but I hope you can follow the pattern. Let me just actually write one more term in there so you can actually see if uh, you follow the pattern, what it should be. Of course, it should be 24 times 48, 72, 96 times 120 and on the top it would have been 1, 4, 7, 10 and then 13 and so on forever. Okay so we need to make a few observations. Something like that I see hidden factorials at this particular denominator so I'm going to have to work smartly. Let's call this particular uh, expression S. So this is the sum that I'm after and let's rewrite it step by step and try to find our way around. So I'm going to factorize at 24 out of the denominators of each term. So for the first one, it's quite silly, really. It's going to be 1 over 24 times 1. I'm not touching the tops at the moment. I'm just going to leave them for the time being. I'm factorizing at 24. Careful, because that's multiplication. So it's going to be 24 squared being pulled out. And then I'm going to have a 1 times 2. And that's what I mean about having factorials hidden on these denominators. As I'm factorizing at 24, now it's going to be times 24, times 24, times 24 cubed. And then I'm going to have a 1 times 2 times 3 or 3 factorial and so on. So I hope you get uh, the idea. I'm just going to write the next few terms without much more explaining. And uh, let's uh, ponder on our next move which it might not be obvious. Okay, so I regret now writing an extra term in there. Lots of crap writing for nothing, really. Okay, so that is 24 to the power of 5 times the 5 factorial. So this is good. Factorials are good because the question is now, is that some kind of exponential? Because factorials, without any gaps, because, uh, of course, the signs and the, the causes have uh, factorials of the denominators, but they're either going in even factorials or odd factorials. The exponential has continuous factorials, like one times, uh, one factor, sorry, zero factorial, one factorial, two factorial, so on. But there's another power series that also has factorials. That's a simple binomial. And this is what I'm looking now at these numerators. Um, the numerators are not nice. One times four times 7 times 10. Yes, there is a pattern, but I have to see the pattern possibly in a very, very different way. This is the next step, which is a little bit hard to actually see. What I'm going to do, and I'll try to justify it, just look at these numbers. They have a gap of 3, okay? Let's look at this line here. Let's this numerator, just on its own. 1. And then we got a 4, then we got a 7, then we got a 10. Don't worry about the multiplication. Just look at these numbers now, this sequence of numbers. If I was to divide them by 3, so the 1 apart now, basically. Okay, so a third, four thirds, seven thirds. So they're going up in 1s. If they were going down in 1, that would be a binomial when you're having like n, n minus 1, n minus 2. Can I reverse this to be going upwards by putting a minus? The answer is not quite, but if I completely change it to minus a third, minus four thirds, minus seven thirds, minus 10 thirds. This is this quantity here. So somehow I need to, first of all, create the, the over three. Then I have to put minuses, which of course I don't have, and then somehow balance those minuses. Okay, because of course everything is positive in there. So let's do one step at a time. So let's rub off this um, workings here. And uh, what the way I will do it there, so we can all follow, is if you look at each individual term, this one I will leave it, the one doesn't bother me, is this bit here. I will divide top and bottom, okay, of this fraction by three. 
So this is going to give me one third and I'm going to get now an eight times one factorial. So I'm going to start writing at the same time this as factorials, okay? So this is going to be divide top and bottom now by nine, three there and three there. So I'm going to have one third times four thirds. So all together are divided by nine. But it's exactly the same thing. If you look at the 24, if it's squared, if I divide the 24 by three, it's going to become an eight. And of course, it'll be squared. That's exactly the same, of course, as dividing top and bottom by three squared. Okay, I can continue with this. So the first step is quite obvious. I'm creating this desired thirds because I think they might have something to do with this. So this will give me now eight cubed times three factorial and so on. I think I'm, I will not bother with this term because it's really annoying me now that I have written it. Uh, a third times four thirds times seven thirds times 10 thirds. And then I'm going to have um, an eight to the four. And of course, a times four factorial plus dot, dot, dot. I'm not bothering with this one. And I hope we can see what I'm actually saying about dividing top and bottom by three. I hope I'm not insulting your intelligence by actually showing you the obvious. If you look at this one times four, times seven times 10. I'm just looking at this term just to make sure we all happy. Forget about the factorial, that's the four factorial there. Just look at the 24 to the four. So it's 24 times 24 times 24 times 24. So if I divide everything by three on top and bottom, I will get, of course, this seven thirds times 10 thirds. And then everything divides by three on the denominator. And of course, the 24s will become all 8s. But of course, it's 8 times 8 times 8 times 8, which of course is 8 to the 4. So I hope you're all happy with what I've just done in there. So remember, I really want to be going down minus a third, minus four thirds, minus seven thirds, and so on. So my next line is it's going to be a little bit bizarre because I'm going to put some minuses which are not there, and then I'm going to try to balance it afterwards. So this one, I'm going to write again. So I'm going to put, of course, let me just use a different color pen for this. I'm going to put a minus on, actually I'll put the minus afterwards, so otherwise I'll be all day just uh, clicking and unclicking pen, so I do apologize. So I'm gonna write the one third here, and then I'm going to put the one factorial. I'm leaving that eight for the time being, so be aware as we're writing the lines. I'm just concentrating on this top at the moment and what I would really like to have in there. So that is, of course, a one third times a four thirds. And then I'm going to have a three, no, three factorial, I beg your pardon, a two factorial there. So that's this term here, two factorial. Let's put the minuses in. So we got minus and a minus. That's okay because of course, and remember I haven't been putting this eight yet into this. So these are still missing from this line here. And the same thing for the next uh, few terms. So I'll go a third. There's my four thirds. There's my seven thirds, three factorial. And one more term, we've got one third, four thirds. I'm going to put the minuses next, okay, and see what I need to be doing in order to have an equivalent expression. Okay, so first of all, I need minuses everywhere otherwise the pattern is not going down in one so this is now minus a third minus four thirds minus seven thirds and so on minus four thirds minus seven thirds minus ten thirds um let's see what happened now to this uh, signs of course some terms haven't changed uh, for example this is exactly the same in terms of plus and minus as this ones but this now i have created a minus i left some space between the terms for a reason there and the reason is because, of course, I left out the eight, eight squared, eight cubed. So I'm going to actually write it a little bit differently. See this one over eight, I'm going to write it next to it. But of course, I'm going to write there a one eighth, that's this bit here, but I'm going to put a minus inside it. That is definitely the same as this term here. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm gonna put the one eighth in here but of course it's squared, so I'm gonna put in a bracket and put squared there, and also I'm gonna put a minus in here. 
that is still squares to a positive, that's positive, so it balances the second term. It's exactly the same as this. And the same thing, and I begin to see now light at the end of the tunnel. So this is now cubed. And of course, if I put now a minus in here, because I have to have exactly the same in here, positive, and that's, sorry, I beg your pardon, negative, and that's also negative, so altogether positive. And I think this now will sort out my pattern. All is left is to put another one eight to the power of four, stick a negative in it. And not only now I have factorials, I have the powers going, not the powers, there's numbers at the stage, minus a third, minus four thirds, minus seven, going down in ones. And I have something in a bracket, that's the minus an eighth, is consistent all the way through, that's going to the power of one, to the power of two, three, four, and so on forever. Well, if we look at what this is, this is in fact the binomial expansion of one minus uh, actually, I'll write a number. It's 1 minus an eighth to the power of minus a third. If you look at what will be happening, first of all, um, it's going to start with a 1. Then it's going to be starting with power over 1 factorial times minus an eighth to the 1, and so on. This will be producing exactly those terms. So essentially, the series now has been summed. It's going to be, of course, 7 eighths to the power of minus a third, which is the cube root of this quantity turned upside down. So I'm going to turn it upside down and cube root it at the same time. So eight over seven. And that cube roots nicely to a two over the cube root of seven. So this particular infinite series converts this to actually a pretty straightforward third when you look at it. Something we didn't expect perhaps we're expecting the recent uh, series that uh, I have done uh, on, on lectures on. They've got like ease and kind of like nice stuff. This converges to uh, a, an irrational number, the, the cube root of uh, seven on the denominator. So I think perhaps a little bit unexpected. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it and I'm signing out.